Welcome back to CJ Race Cars YouTube channel and today we are working on finishing up some modifications on Eagle that we'll get into in just a minute. Today's video is sponsored by CJ Race Cars and if you didn't already know we're going to be giving away a few pieces of Eagle and the window and window frames out of Leroy from when they blew out at 190 eight-ish miles an hour. If you haven't already gone over, go over to cjracecars.com and order some merch before this Friday, and you may just end up with either Leroy's windows or a piece of Eagle's rocker panel. As you can see, we're replacing the rocker panels and a few small pieces of the quarter panel. You may end up with just one of them. We've also added three new shirt designs just for this deal. They'll be pre-order only, and whatever's ordered by Friday, that's all we'll sell those designs. They're really cool, plain design with a vertical CJRC logo and we offer them in a few different colors that match some hats that you guys might already have. Make sure if you want a chance to end up with a piece of Eagle or Leroy, you get your orders in by this Friday, November 15th. Thanks for your support. Let's get to the video. Today, the plan is to get the new rocker panels installed, the old quarter panels cut up, and the new quarter panels fit so that the 315 fits without hitting the rocker or the quarter panel. We've had a million questions that people are asking about gearing. That's, I think, been the biggest question that we've had on YouTube, Facebook, and everywhere. So. About the gearing, as you can see, Eagle's transmission is out of the car and it's going back to Mark Mickey. The next race we're racing is eighth mile, so there's no real need to change the rear gear right now. And we are going from a two speed to a three speed. So that's the update kind of on gearing. I believe when we run quarter mile again, we will have a different rear gear. The gear was picked because the original goal was to only run the car a thousand feet. And with it being a brand new car, we weren't sure how long it was gonna take to for Garrett and for the car to be comfortable at a thousand feet to run it out the quarter mile if he wanted to. Obviously, I think the car went pretty smoothly and he quickly acclimated himself to driving at 246 miles an hour. And being competitive like he is, he was ready to go quarter mile. Uh, the gearing is what it is. We will not have that same problem next time we go quarter mile racing now that the car is lined out and he is ready to drive it to the quarter mile. So that being said, it will have a three speed and with the different gearing, they'll be able to leave in second gear or first gear. So that'll help with any rear gear that we do have. But for now, we will keep this rear gear in it because the next race we're going to is gonna be eighth mile. If you can tell right now, it has a 275 on instead of a 315. So the next race we're going to is also gonna be a race on a 275, not a 315. I do think after this race, Petty would like to see us run a lot more like Radio Versa World or 315 stuff, which I think is really cool. And I think the turbo combination has a good shot in that class with the weight rules. So we'll see. We'll see what the uh, future holds. For now, we just got to get this thing to RK, uh, get it fixed up. We got some really big plans that Cletus will show you right after paint that I think is going to be really cool to do with the car. A lot of cool stuff coming up. Let's get to fixing these quarter panels. We just kind of cut this here so that we could race the race like we talked about without having the rear end before it was hard to swing that and replicate it and see exactly what it was going to look like so we ended up having to basically trim on eagle from about here to there to make it work the problem with that is then you end up with just a lip here you don't have this uh you know one inch basically break and it, it, it doesn't look factory when a 69 camaro when you cut like this the 69 camaro looks good in my opinion because it sweeps almost yes. straight down on on both sides pretty much so what we're doing is by by opening this up a little bit we're gonna just move this fo this whole basically thing basically forward. So it'll thing. keep the same shape, it's just gonna be a little bit bigger. I'll be able to mark my middle and then cut whatever distance this is gonna be moving. I'll be able to cut over and this'll just go in and butt up against it. So I'll have a piece that butts up to the front side and this back piece will butt up to the back side. So right. we're probably gonna go back about an inch in the back also. To yeah. accommodate the 315s that are under it. Yeah, and the, and the other thing is too is since these this uh, trim here is so close to here, we're probably going to take the the section we need out of here instead of here. Because if you took it out of here, your trim would end up right. almost in a wheel. If you have this fin in the 69, and it's just going to be a lot less noticeable if we just move this whole section forward, which is going to narrow this up. It's just how I've always done it. Well, the biggest thing is this takes a little bit of thought because there's a lot of cars out there that you'll see. They basically just hack up whatever they need to to make the tire fit. And we try to be as cautious as we can to when we do hack them up that they still look factory if you didn't really pay attention. Well, that's so that's the goal. That's the key is trying to camouflage the modification. Depending on the vehicle, the cuts are going to be different because of the way this has a little bit of a bow one way 
a bow another way, we end up cutting up kind of high where the handle is kind of flatter. Other cars, like I've, I've done a Chevelle recently, where all we did was move the lip. Right. Because it was just the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, different cars are going to be sectioned different ways. It, it all depends on, on the shape of the quarter panel and, and thinking it out because at the end of the day, once this is all welded back together, it's got to be done right. These cars are very violent. And if it's not welded back together and ground down properly, over time, it's, that weld is going to fail and it's going to show up through the bodywork and it's just a bad deal. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. It's time consuming. It, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but when it's done right, it's right and it looks right. You walk by it 50 times and not even know it was even touched. And yeah. that's, that's the, what, the look we're, we're going for. Right now I'm in the process of laying out some cut lines for my replacement quarter panel. Basically, I'm cutting this section out and I'm gonna split it in the middle and I'm gonna graph it onto the eagle, which is gonna enable me to open this wheel well open up just a little bit wider to allow the articulation that we need for the rear suspension to separate properly and hopefully solve all our rubbing issues without looking like a hacked up quarter panel. So that's the plan. If you want to put on your special 3D glasses, you can watch me mess this up in 3D. <laughs> section for the front, section for the back. We'll see if we can't get them tires fit in the wheel well then. You can see how this has been clearance forward as opposed to the stock setup. So what we're going to do is they're basically going to graph this in two inches forward and what we'll do is we'll cut out this section and put this in its place. At which point we'll have plenty of room for articulation of the tires. At that point, camera's trying to soften the blow. See, that's when you know Cameron's coming in with bad news. He's locked and loaded to drop a bomb. Regardless, that's the, the task at hand. Basically, we're stretching, similar to the same thing we do with the big tires, but in this case, we have to do it for the articulation of the rear end. It's just the nature of the beast. And with the tight deadline that we had, we didn't have a rear to be able to check all the clearances. So we'll make it right. Ready? Yep. Ugh. Ready? Ugh. One more. Yep. Drop it down a little. All right, bump it. Bump it again. Okay. That should be pretty close. Yeah, let's check it. Yeah, another bump. Oh. That's pretty close. And that'll be our new rocker panel. Double back on the top where the door goes so you get a nice edge, and that's it. This is 
is our contour for the door. But as the door swings open, it's going to hit. So we have to knock that down a little bit. No turning back now. I have my center marked here. So this is actually only about a quarter inch back from the stock location. Light on my first cut because I like to cut more than once, trim into where I have to be. So now that I know I have plenty of material to work with to take a little bit more off of this corner and slide this back a little bit. You only get one shot at this. And not that I can't order another quarter panel if I mess this up, but I, messing the quarter panel up on the car is huge. It would be bad to mess up this quarter panel. So we're going to go at it effectively, but we're going to take our time and sneak up on it. The contours seem to match. The quarter panels look close enough where they're going to go together seamlessly. This is the start of it. Yeah, we're cutting on the Eagle. And we're going to keep cutting and get this all sorted out. Get it back up to uh, get the paint touched up and get her back out racing. All right, that's pretty much going to do it for today's video. As you can see, Troy has this quarter panel going back together. It was not easy cutting that quarter panel up with a fresh paint job, but had to be done. And uh, knowing better to do it, and Troy does a really good job at doing it. Got the rocker panel bent and put back on. Transmission's gone, headed to Mark Mickey. And uh, we're going back together. So that's it for this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.